Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhai Evacha Patitanam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Hadvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So welcome everyone to our ongoing study of Recording in Progress but Shastri, we're studying Bhagavad Gita and we're on lesson number seven, which is we're going to look at chapter number ten today. You can see the title of lesson seven, the Chatur Sloki Gita. So lesson ten lesson, uh, chapter ten rather is entitled Padma Yes, Guru Maharaj. What's wrong? What's happening? Oh, Guru Swarna Mataji, if you can't hear, etc., just log out because the rest of us can uh, hear. I can't see, Maharaj. I can hear. But I can't see the screen. You can't yeah. see. Can you see oh, the oh, screen, Padma oh, They are able to see the Padma Lachan Prabhu only. They are not able to see Maharaj. Oh, okay. Prabhu, you I need can't to... see Maharaj. We are not able to see Maharaj. Only yeah. Padma Lachan Prabhu and Maharaj. No, I think uh, Amara Nimai Prabhu, you, you have highlighted me. You have to remove that, Prabhuji. I am only made as made as goals, Prabhu. Nothing I have done. I didn't even spotlight you. Are you able to see the screen? No, no, Maharaj, no, we are, yes, now you are busy. Yes, now, no, Maharaj, no. we can see. Thank you. Okay, let me try again. No, Maharaj, we can see you, not the screen. Ah, oh, what's going on? But Malocha, why is that? Uh, Amara Nimai Prabhu, did you change any settings? No, Prabhu. No, Prabhu. No, no, just check. No, share, share screen option is uh, open. Or I make yes. co host so that uh, he can do all the things that you are doing. Screen? Share screen. Prabhu, uh, Prabhu, can you check, please? Is this working now? Oh, okay, 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 okay. One second. Yes, thank you. Yes. Yeah, it's working. No, 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 now the screen is not also coming. <laughs> it came, it went away. No? Great. Yes, now the yeah. screen is there. Okay. Share screen is there? No? Yes, thank you, Prabhu. Okay. Okay, so we'll go ahead. Yes, yes Maharaj. All right, so I will look at the objectives we want to cover. We're going to talk about the, the value of knowledge of Krishna's vibhuti, vibhuti yoga, uh, described particularly in these three verses, 10.1, uh, 10.7 and 10.18. So we'll look at the value of the knowledge of Krishna's vibhuti, or this vibhuti yoga. And then we'll also explain the significance of Krishna's opulences, which is listed in this 10th chapter, from slokas 19 up to 42. The significance of all of Krishna's opulences. And we also want to look at particularly important points 
relevant for personal application from Chaturshloki Gita, Bhagavad Gita 10, 8 to 11. The four verses from the Chaturshloki. And we'll also discuss seeing Krishna everywhere. With reference to Bhagavad Gita, we've also already covered a little bit of this, that section in the seventh chapter. Seventh chapter, verses 8 to 12, describe how we could see Krishna everywhere. And we'll look more in detail, chapter 10, 19 to 41, the different opulences of Krishna as they're described in the 10th chapter. All right? So before we go on, let's just review again the ninth chapter. The ninth chapter we heard, first of all, about qualifications and disqualifications for hearing about Krishna. Right? You remember the qualification was? It should not be envious. Yes, good, right. And what's a disqualification? Yeah. Faith, faith cannot, a faithless person cannot uh, attain Krishna. Right, yeah, faith, okay, good. So envy, faith, these things, you have to be aware. And then we spoke in the ninth chapter, we heard about Krishna's achintya Beda relationship with the material world, that he's in everything, but he's not in everything, and he's outside of everything. Like that, he's one with the world, but he's different from the world. Then we spoke about non-worshippers. Some people, they, they cannot understand how Krishna is an ordinary person. He appears like an ordinary person, but he's not ordinary, of course. So non-worshippers, and what happens to them? That they're not successful in anything they do. All of their hopes for liberation and fruit of activities, everything will be a failure. And then worshippers, we heard about the Mahatmas, the great souls, how they're always chanting the holy name and they're worshipping Krishna and offering obeisances to Krishna, Mahatmas, like that. And then we heard about Krishna as the supreme object of worship. Some people worship Krishna through the universal form that was described, 16 up to 20, and then we heard also uh, other people worshipping Krishna. Some people of course, worship Krishna, some people think they're worshipping Krishna through the demigods, they worship the demigods and the results of their worship. And then we heard about the glories of directly worshipping Krishna, offering simple items like even a leaf, a flower, fruit, water, and then how Krishna takes care of his devotees, how he carries what they lack and he pre preserves what they have, and how Krishna even delivers a sinful person. Even one may be sinful, but they can be delivered by the mercy of Krishna, because they're situated, somehow they've got transcendental knowledge and they may have some sin, but Krishna will quickly purify that. All right, that was chapter 9. We're going ahead now, chapter 10. Vibhuti Yoga, the opulence of the Absolute. Vibhuti, meaning, not, generally we think vibhuti means ashes, but uh, vibhuti means actually uh, some very uh, powerful, very special opulence. And we're going to hear about Krishna's opulences today. All right, so the 10th chapter, here's the sections which we are there in the 10th the chapter. So the first seven verses, describe how we can we have to understand Krishna's unfathomable nature. 
And but when we have properly understood the nature of Krishna, something of the nature of Krishna, of course we can never know everything about Krishna. As it said, it's unfathomable. So we can't know Krishna fully, but we know something about Krishna. We've understood something about Krishna and his greatness, and we want to engage in his devotional service. So this is brought out in the first seven verses. For his benefit, really, Arjuna already understands Krishna. He's fully convinced about Lord Krishna. But for the benefit of common people, because Arjuna is a devotee, so he has compassion. He does care about other people. And Arjuna is making that request so that the other people will be able to hear about Krishna. Not everyone can just simply accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead and his form as being divine. As we said, other people think of him as a common man. So for the common man, those people who are, are common men and who are not able to understand the divine nature of Krishna, then Arjuna wanted Krishna to explain his opulences. How people could see Krishna through the material world, through the objects of the material world. And that's the rest of the chapter, text 19 up to 42, Krishna's opulences are described. All right, we'll go ahead. So the first section, one to seven, one who has understood Krishna's unfathomable nature engages in his devotional service. We have to have faith. As we said, we should have faith in Krishna. We should have uh, confidence in what we're doing, that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. He's not an ordinary person. So Prabhupada begins the first purport of the first verse by just explaining about Bhagavan. We notice when Lord Krishna speaks, there Srila Vyasadeva always writes, Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. Uh, he doesn't just write Sri Krishna Uvacha or Sri Vasudeva Uvacha, but he says Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. So who is Bhagavan? We should understand that, and here you can see at the bottom we put the verse 
which is given to us, uh, Parasara Muni, the father of Vyasadeva, he'd actually, he's accredited with this verse. Aishwarashya Samagrashya Virashya Yashashashriya Jnana Vairagiyas Chaiva Samam Bhaga Itigana. So anyway, the opulences are being listed, Krishna's opulences, wealth, beauty, fame, knowledge, strength, renunciation. These are the different opulences, or the this is the, the, the opulences of Lord Krishna, Bhagavan. He possesses all of these greater than anybody else. Everyone has some kind of wealth, we have some kind of strength or fame or whatever, but no, none of us can equal Krishna. We have some wealth, we, we cannot equal Krishna's wealth, we can't equal his fame, his strength. Oh. Another way to understand the meaning of Bhagavan, uh, sometimes we divide it, some of the acharyas will explain the meaning of Bhagavan in this way. We see, first of all, Ba means Bharta. And Bharta, the word Bharta means one who is the nourisher, the maintainer, or the establisher, or, or in relation of the devotee. Krishna nourishes, maintains, establishes the devotees. In this way, the, suff the suffix ba is understood. And then ga, ga means gama, gamaita, gamaita, right? gamaita, meaning he who creates all qualities in his devotee. This is Lord Krishna. He creates the qualities in the devotee. And he also grants pure prema to his devotee. You want to get love of God? You want to get Krishna prema? We, we, we have to get it from Krishna. Krishna gives that prem to his devotee. We don't get it without Krishna's sanction. And he who gives the Vaikuntha to his devotee. We want to go to Vaikuntha. We would like to go back to Godhead. Krishna delivers the devotee from birth and death. It's Krishna. Ultimately, Krishna takes and he sends either Vishnu Dudas to bring us there, or he himself will come on the back of Garuda to pick us up out of the ocean of material existence and take us back to Godhead. So you can see Ba, Ga, and then Van, right? The, finally, the, pref the, the prefix Va. Va means Vas, meaning all the devotees reside within him, and he resides in all his devotees. So this is interesting concept to understand, that all the devotees reside within Krishna, and Krishna resides in all his devotees. This is the transcendental loving relationship between the Lord and the devotees. Sometimes we sing that one song, Naratam uh, Das Thakur wrote one song, uh, said, I, Krishna is in the heart of the devotees and the devotees are in Krishna's heart. So, yeah? Yes, good, go ahead. Ebaro Karna Karo Vaishnava Gosai, that song. Uh, uh, yeah, Vaishnava, yeah, Karna Vaishnava Gosai. 
तुम्हारा हृदय सदा गोविंद विश्राम गोविंद यस लेट्स राइट या Say it again, Maharaj. Omara Hridaye Sada Govinda Vishnu Govinda Kohe Na Mora Vaishnava Para. Oh, you're a nice kirtanier. Eh? You can sing very good, very nice. So, this is the meaning. That all the devotees reside within Krishna, and Krishna resides in all his devotees. This is fun. So in this way, we understand Bhagavan in different ways. This is the position of Lord Krishna. We want to have faith in the in the position of Krishna, the opulence of Krishna. So when we have understood Krishna's opulences, we have a little faith in in Krishna's nature. We will want to engage in his service, and then, so, the chapter goes brings us to the chatur sloki of the Bhagavad Gita, those four verses, and then we will hear Arjuna's acceptance and request to hear more of Krishna's opulences, and Krishna will describe his opulences. Up to the end of the chapter, right? So this is chapter ten. Oh. So relationship with previous chapters from the first verse, purport. Would someone like to read? Yeah, can someone volunteer to read this section? Relationship, yeah, yes, Maharaj. Relationship with previous chapters. Now Krishna is instructing Arjuna in more confidential knowledge of his opulences and his words. Previously, beginning with the seventh chapter, the Lord has already explained his different energies and how they are acting. Now in this chapter, he explains his specific opulences to Arjuna. In the previous chapter, he has clearly explained his different energies to establish devotion in firm conviction. Again, in this chapter, he tells Arjuna about his manifestations and various opulences. Bhagavad Gita, ten point one five. Thank you, Madhuri. Thank you. So, so understanding the Lord's energies, we heard in the seventh chapter. We heard about the Lord's prakriti. Right, the, the how there's the different elements of the material nature, and then there were the living entities, the superior prakriti, and we heard how we're struggling with the material energy. We heard also how the Lord is pervading the world. We heard, for example, in the seventh chapter, was describing. Uh, He, the Lord said, "He is the taste in water, the light of the sun and the moon, the syllable Om and Vedic mantras." So some brief vibhutis were mentioned. Some of the opulences of Krishna were given there in the seventh chapter, and then the ninth chapter, eighth chapter was a little con continuation of the seventh chapter. The ninth chapter. Brought up more the mood of devotion, right? Full, complete devotion to Krishna. Always the, thinking of the Lord and His transcendental form and engaging in His worshipable service, and how Krishna reciprocates with that devotee. So now, Arjuna wants to hear. Now Krishna, anyway, is going to tell Arjuna about his. His opulences, different opulences. Yes, someone can read. Unless one, one is one is like it and sharing. Please follow. The reading order is already in the chat. Please follow the reading order. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Prabhu Krishna. Shall I read, Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu ji. Unless one is one is firmly convinced of the different opulence of the Supreme Lord. He cannot engage in devotional service. 
generally people know that god is great but they do not know in detail how god is great here are the details if one know factually how god is great then nat- naturally he become a surrender soul and engage himself in the devotion service of the lord when one factually know the opulence of the supreme there is no hari krishna there is no alternative but to surrender to him this factual knowledge can be known from the description in shrimad bhagavatam and bhagavad gita and similar literatures hari krishna thank you prabhu yes oh. and i think there's a bit more yeah go ahead go ahead prabhu keep reading yes ma'am yes maharaj when one is firmly convinced of them he accept krishna with great faith and without any doubt and he engage in devotion service all this particular knowledge is required in order to increase one's interest in the loving devotion service of the lord one should not neglect to understand fully how great krishna is for by knowing the greatness of krishna one will be able to be fixed in sincere devotion service bhagavad gita 10.7 hari krishna yes right so prabhupad is expressing here the need for us to understand how krishna is great <laughs> of course we know krishna as a cowherd boy and the flute player but we should know his greatness and how he, how wonderful everything about krishna is we should develop that that great faith no there shouldn't be any doubt about surrendering to krishna and how krishna is the supreme above everyone and when we have that full faith then we will certainly be fixed in devotional service so this is the idea that we want to become fixed in our krishna consciousness and in order to be fixed we have to have a little understanding you know sometimes you ask people who's krishna they say oh is it the cowherd boy you know but they they don't really know we don't they don't know very much about krishna sometimes they they only know krishna is oh he's the the one with the gopis who has all the girlfriends <laughs> and they they don't they don't know properly what is happening what is actually taking place and so it's easy for people to be misguided because the pastimes of lord krishna are very attractive and very often they're not understood properly so it's important to hear about krishna carefully that's why we're studying bhagavad gita and when we go on to study shrimad bhagavatam we study from the beginning we have to understand about lord krishna's creative potencies how he's not just a cowherd boy but he's actually the original personality of godhead and we will see of course in the in the next verse actually this is 107 we will see in 108 how krishna describes something of his greatness something of his opulences all right so we this go to the chapter sloki these four verses of the bhagavad gita the first one the first of the four verses right i think you all know these verses by now Yes. Yeah. So this first verse, this is sambandha gyan, knowledge of the relationship with the Lord and His energies, the spiritual and the material world. So Krishna said He's the source of everything, not just the material world, but the spiritual world. Everything. It's all His. Everything comes from Him. so that so the first section the first half of the verse and then lord krishna says when we perfectly understand it we will engage in devotional service 
and worship Krishna with all our hearts. If we properly understood this fact, then certainly we will be very enthusiastic and eager to engage in Krishna's service and to absorb our hearts in thinking of him. So, two significant words, buddha. Buddha. And that's in the last line, right? Iti matva bhajantimam buddha. Buddha, the le meaning learned, those who properly understood this. Then, Buddha bhava samanvita, with great attention. Prabhupada says it simply as, with all their hearts. But the idea is, we will worship Krishna with great attention full attention. We shouldn't be inattentive, just like when we're chanting the holy name. Inattention is common. We're chanting the holy name, but our attention is not on, in the holy name. We've become over-familiar with the holy name, and we don't put much attention into the chanting. We allow our minds to wander. And so this is not the proper way to chant, right? And the, similarly in any of our devotional service, we should do it with great attention. We should feel ourselves to be very fortunate to be engaged in the service of Lord Krishna. So this is the first of the four verses and uh, Srila Prabhupada in his purport, he quotes many different scriptures to establish how Krishna is the source of everything. And some people may say, oh, Krishna is not God, Shiva is God, or Vishnu is God, or, you know, there's so many things. So you have to, we, you have to be able to establish Krishna's supreme position over everyone, over everything. All right. Here's a from Prabhu, Prabhupada's lecture. Someone like to read? Whose turn is it to read? I am the origin of everything. Everything means the universe and whatever you can imagine. That comes within the category of everything. So if Krishna is the source of everything, then if you are or Krishna, you love universe. Actually, that is so. If you love your father, then you love your brother, you love your country, you love your uh, countrymen. So the love begins from the origin, and you love your body, then you love your finger. Itimata bhajan mam. One who has understood this fact that God is the origin of emanation, and one who has understood this fact that nice scientifically, then by loving God, you love everything. And Bahu uh, Sanmand Buddha, one who must be very well versed at the uh, time completely absorbed in the spiritual emotion, that Bhava. This Bhava is the very highest platform of coming to the perfection of the life, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhupada. <laughs> Thank you, Prabhu. So, Prabhupada bringing up these terms for us here, Baba Samanvita, right? But, but you love God, you love everything. So you take care, you, you do everything with attention. We'll do it very well, very nicely. And, and then proper, we should be very well versed at the same time. We should be absorbed in spiritual emotion, Bhava, right? The high, Bhava, Devotional services described it's on their sadhana bhakti, bhava bhakti, and prema bhakti. So bhava is devotional service in ecstasy. So that mood, that bhava, that should be there. One time uh, the devotees were worshipping the deity and somehow it happened they were not able to get fresh flowers and the flowers which they made the garland for the deities from was they were quite withered 
And Prabhupada noticed and Prabhupada was very upset. And Prabhupada chastised the devotees saying, because you have no bhava, because you have no bhava you do like this. And so we, we should have this bhava, we should have this feeling, this uh, ecstatic emotion, spiritual emotion, this mood of really wanting to do everything nicely for Krishna. So this is required. Buddha bhava samanvita. Right? Can't, you should note these words. Buddha bhava samanvita. This is when we've understood that everything comes from Krishna and we've actually understood Krishna's supreme position, then we will want to love everything as we love Krishna. So this is bhava, developing this kind of love. Okay, so that was the Sambandha Gyan, and then the next verse, text number 9, is the Abhidaya, the process of devotional service, described here in this verse, very uh, uh, important verse. Right? Matchata madgata prana bodhayanta parasparam katayantascha mam nityam tushyanti cha ramanti cha. So, the thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me. Matchata madgata prana. Their thoughts, their chitta, they're dwelling in me and their lives are surrendered to me, they're fully devoted to my service. And then bodhayanta parasparam, they derive great satisfaction and bliss from always enlightening one another and conversing about me. So katayantas chamam nityam, they're always discussing the glories of Krishna and tushyanti cha, ramanti cha enlightening one another in conversing about Krishna. So this is the life of a devotee. This is the meaning of association. When we come together, there should be these discussions. We take pleasure in discussing with each other, mm -hmm. devoting our, ourselves to Krishna's service. And we get so much pleasure hearing about Krishna discussing the pastimes of Krishna with the devotees. So this is the process of devotional service. So, oh, here's a little exercise we can do. Krishna describes that the devotees enjoy discussing amongst themselves about Him. So divide into pairs and share realizations about discussing Krishna with other devotees. It could be one's guru, Srila Prabhupada, or any devotee. And then we will regroup and share experiences. Right? So, can we, how many people are here today? 14, Guru Maharaj. 14? Okay, so uh, can, can we have seven pairs? Does that include me, 14? Uh, no, it excludes you, Guru Maharaj. Oh, okay. All right. Anyway, seven pairs. And we'll just give you five minutes just to discuss something okay. about sharing realizations and discussing Krishna with devotees. I hope you've got some realizations. I hope you've done this. You've had an opportunity to talk about Krishna with others. To be devotee. All right?
Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandar Pranam. Hare Krishna Prabhu, Dandabad Pranams. Is every you can close the groups, I think. We'll close the groups, get everyone back. Oh, good. Yes. Sorry, Navaraj Prabhu, I couldn't put you into a room because you were you were joined late today. My apologies, Prabhu. I forgot about this class this morning because I had to work. Okay. Uh, All right. So let's hear from Yashoda and Subhadra. What did they talk about? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna everyone. So I was um, telling that last time I talked about Krishna was when I sent a mail to His Holiness Bhakti Guruhat Bhagavad Maharaj. I was asking how to achieve exquisite devotion to Lord Krishna. And Maharaj quoted the verse from chapter 9 where uh, it is said that Krishna carry what you uh, lack and preserve what you have. And Maharaj also mentions that that uh, by executing the nine processes of bhakti, shavanam, kirtanam, smaranam, then gradually Krishna, one will achieve a devotion, exquisite devotion. So that was the last time. Okay. So gradually, by doing devotional service, Krishna is going to give you the real bhakti, the real taste. Okay, thank you. What about Su what about Subhadra? Subhadra Mariji, is she there? Uh, Subhadra Mataji. Where Maja is there? Hare Krishna? Yes, yes. Maybe she's... Probably she's away for a moment, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Yeah, I guess not there. All right. What about... I well, just want to hear one more. What about Rukmini Mohan? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Satish Prabhu and uh, we talked about this, discussed this. And uh, Satish Prabhu mentioned that uh, she had a god sister. And uh, Satish Prabhu had to uh, do some work, had to do some work. Uh, I, I just uh, slipped my mind whether it was studies and he was a little bit worried about it. And the God sister, uh, the Siksha Guru, um, one Mataji informed him that sh uh, he should do his best, but uh, should leave the rest to uh, Krishna. So in, in that way, he found that things went well for him. Uh, he tried his best and he was conscious of the Supreme, uh, Lord Krishna, and then things worked, uh, everything fell into its place. Uh, so I had uh, just, it just occurred to me that, you know, Lord Krishna is also telling Arjuna that you must do your duty, but you're not, you should not be too concerned about the result. So, and he did not uh, let Arjun uh, uh, forego his prescribed duties. So, Krishna consciousness means that we engage ourselves in our duties, uh, but without uh, the result is uh, for, for, the, for Lord Krishna to decide. That's, that's his uh, call, really. So, that's something we discussed, uh, Maharaj. Okay, Prabhu. So you discussed 
Krishna helps you to become detached from the results. Yes, Maharaj. Takes, yes. takes away your attachment to the results. Yes. You become dependent on Krishna. That's right, Maharaj. Yeah, it's actually a habit which we have to cultivate to, you know, this is part of becoming Krishna conscious that we will want to speak about Krishna. We want to share realizations about Krishna. We like to discuss Krishna and Prabhupada and so on. So, talking about Krishna, of course, sometimes we talk about devotees, sometimes we don't always talk in, in, a, in a Krishna conscious manner. We may uh, minimize the devotee or we may find fault with the devotee, but we want to glorify them, we want to develop the, the habit of speaking good about devotees and appreciating the efforts of devotees. It's important for us to develop, to be like the, the bee, to take the honey, right? Take the honey from the flowers. Don't be like the fly and always go to the sower. So we need to develop that habit to, to devote ourselves. Okay, so we'll go ahead. Here's text number 10. Tesham satata yuktanam bhajatam pritipurvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam yenamam upayantite. To those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. So this is a verse which is important for us. This is the highest stage of devotion. I said this is prayojana, developing loving, uh, the, the real loving relationship with the Lord. As described here, satitam yuktanam, constantly devoted. The devotion to Krishna, our devotion to Krishna has to be 24-7, we often say. Right? Because we have these shops now, they have these shops open 24 hours, 7 days a week. So our devotional service should be like that. It should be constant, it should be continuous. And if we are devoted to Krishna, and not just simply devotion, but it must be with love, that priti purvakam, but bhajatam priti purvakam, serving the Lord with real love, with that real deep feeling and affection, constantly serving Him with pure loving devotion. So that is what really attracts Krishna, naturally. And Krishna describes how He reciprocates with that devotee. And I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Dadami buddhi yogam tam yenamam upayantite. Krishna gives the knowledge by which we can come to him. Focus on buddhi yoga. And from Prabhupada's purport. Right? Whose turn is it to read? It's mine, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. When a person knows the goal of life, what is addicted to the fruits of activities, but is addicted to the fruits of activities, he is acting in karma yoga. When he knows that the goal is Krishna, but he takes pleasure in mental speculation to understand Krishna, he is acting in jnana yoga. And when he knows the goal and seeks Krishna completely in Krishna consciousness and devotional service, he is acting in bhakti yoga or buddhi yoga, which is the complete yoga. This complete yoga is the highest perfectional stage of life. Bhagavad Gita 10.10, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Antiji. Thank you. All right. So Prabhupada distinguishing between karma yoga and jnana yoga and bhakti yoga. So when he knows the goal and seeks Krishna completely in 
Krishna consciousness. That is actually bhakti yoga. Often our yoga is not so complete. Our, uh, our but we have some bhakti, but it's mixed with jnana and mixed especially with karma. But what Krishna really wants is that pure bhakti, complete bhakti yoga. That is the best way to attract Krishna and to please Krishna. All right, this is commenting on that term priti purvaka. Yes, someone else read? Bhagavad Gita 10.10 .10. Priti Purvakam With love, not only that officially you love, then he will talk with you. Buddhi Yogam Dadamitam He will give you intelligence. He will talk with you because he is within your heart. Simply you have to qualify yourself to talk with Krishna. Then Krishna is not far away. He is within your heart. Otherwise, he is very, very far away. If you want to understand by your intelligence, what intelligence have you got? You have, you have to please the Supreme Personality of God by your service. And then he will reveal himself. Here I am. What do you want? That is the process. Lecture on Bhagavad Gita 13.15, uh, Bombay, 1973. Hare Krishna. So, this verse is relevant because you know, we do find people coming and talking that, oh, Krishna spoke to me, you know, I, I, I speak, to, Krishna came and told me, you know, we often get people like that coming to our centers and they'll tell us how, oh, Krishna comes to them and they speak to Krishna. And so, uh, who does Krishna actually speak with? He will speak with those people who are actually genuinely devoted to him. Not that he would just speak with anyone, but he will speak to those who have that real devotion. Then he will talk with them. So there is a qualification. It's not just some sentimental thing that, oh, Krishna will talk with you. But we have to qualify ourselves to speak to Krishna. All right. Yes. Someone else, Sri? Bhagavad Gita 10.10 purport. A person may have a bona fide spiritual master and may be attracted to the spiritual organization. But if he is still not intelligent enough to make progress, then Krishna from within gives him instructions so that he may ultimately come to him without difficulty. The qualification is that a person always engage himself in Krishna consciousness and with love and devotion render all kinds of services. He should perform some sort of work for Krishna and that work should be with love. If a devotee is not intelligent enough to make progress on the path of self-realization, but is sincere and devoted to the activities of devotional service, the Lord gives him a chance to make progress and ultimately attain him. Thank you, Prabhu. Yes. So, Prabhupada is describing to us how Krishna reciprocates with the devotee. And we do find this kind of situation you have a spiritual master, you're a member of an organization, but somehow we just feel we're not making progress. And so then Krishna from the heart gives instruction what we may have to do. But as Prabhupada says again, qualification must be there. You have to be qualified. You want Krishna to help you, to guide you, to show you what you need to do. It, there has to be that real love and devotion. You have to be always engaged in Krishna consciousness and willing to do all kinds of services. 
And then Krishna will help. Krishna helps. So the work should be done with love. And then Krishna guides us what we need to do to make progress. So Krishna reciprocates. He's in the heart. He knows our situation. He knows if we're sincere or not. Yes? Someone else read? Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada. There is one common philosophy held by a, by a lot of religious groups that God can be understood directly from within and that no guru is necessary. He is a rascal and one who accepts him is a rascal. How do you think that God is speaking to him? How do you accept it? God talks with whom? Asam Statata. Those who have already become devotee of God and engaged in His service, He talks with them, not a third class fool. One who is engaged in the service of the Lord 24 hours a day, with love and faith, God talks with Him. When one follows instruction of the Guru, Krishna will give intelligence. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Madhuri. So, the, <laughs> we, we have to deal with all these different kinds of philosophies. And there are people who promote this kind of argument that God can be understood from within. And you don't need a guru. So, how to deal with that kind of person, that kind of argument? We have to understand that the Guru is representative of Krishna. And why should we accept this person? The person saying, you don't need a Guru, Krishna from the heart will guide you. But how, how can we be sure that Krishna from the heart is speaking? Why should Krishna speak to anybody? Krishna himself says in the Srimad Bhagavatam, that you have to take the mercy of his devotees. When, we're, when we properly respect Krishna's devotees, then Krishna appreciates that person. So becoming a devotee is possible by the mercy of devotees. We have to understand Krishna by devotion, we get devotion from other devotees. So association with devotees and being guided by spiritual teachers is important. We have to follow the instructions. All right, yes, another quote here. Someone like to read? Who's In name? Conclusion. Yes. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Go ahead. In, con in conclusion, if a disciple is very serious, sorry, I can't Okay. In conclusion, if a disciple is very serious to execute the mission of the spiritual master, he immediately associates with the Supreme Personality of Godhead by a Vani or Vapu. This is the only secret of success in seeing the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Instead of being eager to see the Lord in some bush in Vrindavan, while at the same time engaging in sense gratification, if one instead sticks to the principle of following the words of the spiritual master, he will see the Supreme Lord without difficulty. Real intelligence means linking with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When this is done, the Supreme Personality of Godhead from within gives one the real intelligence by which one can return home back to Godhead. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Okay, that's Prabhupada's conversation in New Vrindavan, 1976. So Prabhupada is stressing the importance of the connection with the spiritual teacher. And don't be eager to just go to Krishna directly, 
go to Krishna, you have to be recommended, you have to go through the spiritual teacher. And so if we stick to the principles of following the spiritual master, then we will see Krishna without difficulty. So we do get people who are very independent, they don't want to accept the spiritual teacher, they don't want to be guided. And so very difficult for them to make spiritual advancement. But when we take shelter of a spiritual teacher, then Krishna helps. And certainly Krishna recommends, Lord Krishna himself took a spiritual teacher, to, just to teach us by his example. All right. Um, yes, someone can read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Eagerness as qualification. God want to see how eager you are. So in the development of our eagerness and sincerity to have knowledge in spiritual understanding, God will help us. Laulium, eagerness, that is a prize. That is the only qualification. You must be very, very eager to see the lotus feet of Krishna in this very life. You must be very eager to talk with Krishna in this very life, but not to become Sah Sahajiya by service. Krishna talks with the devotee, but not with the non-devotee. He says in the Bhagavad Gita, Tesam Satatam Yuktanam Bajatam Priti Purvakam. Only persons who are always engaged in Krishna service, he has no other business. Satata means 24 hours, Bajanam means in service. Bajatam means in service. Mm -hmm. You must always find some opportunity to render service to Krishna. That is a qualification. It doesn't matter what you are. You may be this or that, it doesn't matter. But this eagerness for service can be acquired by anyone simply by sincerity. That is a price. Rupa Goswami says, Tatra Laulyam Ekalam Mulyam. So I have too much eagerness, but no, immediately Srila Rupa Goswami wants. Na Janana Koti Bia Sukritvir Labayati. This eagerness to achieve Krishna mercy, to approach the lotus feet of Krishna in this life. I shall do anything. I shall sacrifice anything. This kind of determination is not very easily obtained. Na jananam kotibi sukrivita. Sukriti means pious activities. Without being pious, nobody can approach Krishna. Krishna is not so cheap. Lecture Chaitanya Charitamitam, New Vrindavan 74. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. So Prabhupada's quoting qualification, right? This low yam, this intense desire to achieve something, the greed, this greediness to get something, this low yam. So this is the price. And it says ek ekalam muyam. Tatra loyam ekalam muyam. Only one price. You know, we have the ten. you go to the market and you want to bargain the price. But in this devotional service, Krishna has got fixed price. Fixed price. And the price is loyam, that intense eagerness to get it. So when we have that kind of eagerness, then we get it. But then it, it's also described that we don't get that kind of eagerness very easily that is very rare, doesn't, it's not so easy to get that kind of qualification. We have to be, without being pious, nobody can approach Krishna. So Krishna wants, we pay the proper price, then we can approach him. All right, so we're going to do some little exercises on these things. Uh, we have one, two, three questions. We'll, let's see, we can make some uh, groups to discuss this. How you could reply to the following statements made by people who are not necessarily 
impious. All right. So they're, they're not devotees, but they're not they're not really impious. They're not necessarily. In other words, they may be like, you know, in the mode of goodness or something. But so, first question: I believe. I believe that by helping people in distress, one can always be in communion with God. For God always cares for those in need. All right? So that's the first question. Helping people in distress. One can always be in communion with God. God always cares for those in need. And then, second one, by studying and analyzing various literature, I am in constant communion with God. What is the necessity of service? or devotion, when he is beyond the senses. By studying and analyzing various literature, I am in constant communion. What is the necessity of service or devotion? He's beyond the senses. <laughs> All right? And then the third question, some people say that God speaks to them directly. Therefore, they do not need any guru for guidance. So, let's see, maybe we can have a, one, one question for each group, right? Yes, Guru Maharaj. So, we will have three groups with five members in each group. Okay. All right. We will come back. Um, five minutes is fine, Guru Maharaj. Okay, yes. Okay. So, you. have you got the questions? The one yeah, first. I, I would suggest everyone takes a picture of it so that we are guided. The first group, group one will take the first question, group yes. two, studying and analyzing, and then group three, some people say God speaks to them directly. All right? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Maharaj, please go to previous slide, Maharaj. Sorry? Please go to previous slide. I take the snapshot. This this slide? Yes, yes, Thank you. Okay. Okay, We will come
how the 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 breakout rooms uh, are, are very time time effective uh, in my opinion. They are what? They are very time effective. You know, if if we were to do it in person, it takes a lot of time in the group coming together, etc. But you know, in a virtual breakout rooms, you can immediately put people together. Immediately they start discussing. So it's quite effective. Yeah, I, I think so. Also, I, I I agree with you. Yeah, I think it's a it's a good way of bringing people together. Okay, Guru Maharaj, I think all of us are, are back. Everyone's so, back. All right. So can we have a, one spokesman for group number one? Group number one, the question was, I believe that by helping people in distress, one can always be in communion with God, for God always cares for those in need. Yes, who's the spokesman? Guru Paramaraj is there, Hare Krishna. Group one. Hare Krishna. In my group, I had Maha Pandit as well, I thought, they are Nidhi will speak. I will. We were discussing that uh, this point is very common when we are out in the preaching field. They will always say, "What do you do?" What? So we were saying that this question is more or less like um, people expect welfare work, social work, and uh, we were mentioning that how once a reporter was saying to Shila Prabhupada, "What welfare work do you do for people who are out there um, in distress?" And Shri Prabhupada commented. What welfare work do you know? Uh, um, we are, uh, what do you are thinking is just like bo blowing air on the boil and gives a temporary relief. You in fact to get rid of the boil, one has to cut open the boil and take out all the pus. So other points we were mentioning that we have to give them a bit of education. We do not disrespect uh, as um, Mataji was mentioning, uh, Dipshika Mataji, most of the time when people are in distress, that's when they will definitely take shelter uh, or take shelter of the Supreme Lord. But we we have to extend our help from body, treating the body up to treating the soul to not to take birth again. So we have to engage them and somehow tell them that we also um, eat, but we eat only prasadam, we also um, uh, um, do um, care of the body, but the main uh, knowledge we have to know is that uh, we have to treat the, I mean, we have to uh, get the soul out of this material existence. And the only best process is, easy process is to do bhakti, buddhi yoga, as Shri Prabhupada mentions here. We have to um, uh, be fully, sincerely dedicated, with eagerness do devotional service to the Supreme Personality of God Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. Would anyone else like to add anything to this? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, I would like to add that uh, there is in Bhagavad Gita we have read that uh, there is no point. Impossible. Yeah, there is no point in uh, helping the dress of a person than the. So, what do you mean by helping a person? So, you're going to help the body or the soul? So. I just wanted to add that point uh, that we should help the soul, not the body. Needs are always there, but we have to tell, help the soul. Like uh, how uh, Srila Prabhupada did not join uh, um, Mahatma Gandhi for this reason. So because they were all in the bodily platform, then when he understood that he should help the soul, then he left. Uh, he didn't join the movement. <laughs> okay. Yes. So so couple couple of good examples. Uh, just now, Maharaji said, we don't want to just save the, drown the body, the jacket of the drowning man. We want to save the person. And earlier, Maharaji said, we don't want to just pour water on the boil. You have to take the knife and cut to cure the infection. Sometimes it's necessary. Yes, any other points? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. It just came to my mind that... Uh, uh, it's not that God only cares for those in need. God cares for everyone. Every living being is his child. And uh, just like the sun, the sunshine is for everyone. Uh, it is 
everywhere. So similarly, the uh, good case for everyone. Uh, in terms of uh, distress, practically everyone in this material world is in distress because this material world is characterized by the threefold miseries of existence. So these distresses are there. And then, of course, the ultimate distress of a bad death or latent disease, these ultimate miseries are there. So uh, uh, the best thing is, again, to uh, help uh, take, as my Guru Saman Mamataji has mentioned, to liberate the soul from this material existence and help it attain uh, spiritual kingdom back home, back go back home, back to Godhead. Yeah, the, the Sorry, I forgot to mention one point. We also discussed that this is a kind of extended selfishness on the persons. Oh, can you explain they more? To enjoy the, actually, they are wanting to enjoy their senses, sense gratification by doing this sort of welfare work. They could get name, fame and prestige for their own. Well, mm, that may be, but may not always be the case. That may be that there is personal motivations there. But, you know, there would be, you know, you, if you argue like that to a person, they may, you know, they may protest against that. You try to tell people like that, you are only doing this for your name and fame. There are people who do these things genuinely. They simply want to help others. They're not thinking about their own name and fame. But I appreciate these points that God does care for everyone. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, He's equal to everyone. And here the, the, the person was saying that uh, helping people uh, so they're helping people, they said that God cares for those in need. So what, the question is, what, what do they need? What is the need? What they actually need? And he said, the idea of you're helping people, then they won't need help anymore, then God won't care for them anymore. <laughs> so you're saying God won't, you're going to put God out of a job. God cares for those in need. You're helping the people in need. So maybe you're like God yourself. <laughs> you're God's competitor. I have something to add, Maharaj. In Kali Yuga, it said that nobody will die of hunger. So what is exactly the mean? Mm. Yeah, the people who get more health problems are the people who eat too much. People don't get sick from eating too little. They get sick from eating too much. Okay, so we'll go on to the next question, group number two. Um, Guru Maharaj, there was a lot of enthusiasm from the, the participants, so can I request each of them to just give a snippet of what they wanted to discuss? Okay. Yeah, so Ras Bihari Prabhu and uh, Supreme Mataji, can you please go first, and then followed by Priti Priyanka, Amara Nima and uh, myself. Actually, uh, Maharaj, we were just uh, reading that even though by studying all these books, um, uh, one says that, you know, I, I'm in touch with the God. It always said that it, a book, more than the book Bhagavatam, definitely Krishna is present in Bhagavatam. He himself is there in Bhagavatam. We should worship Bhagavatam. But uh, the book Bhagavatam, uh, more effective would be the devotee, devotee Bhagavatam who would be able to, uh, you know, um, pinch your ears and bring your pull you back with your shika and bring, bring you back to Krishna. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, the devotee Bhagwan is better than the book Bhagwan. Yeah. Maharaj, one more, one more point was uh, that uh, practice, this is a place where we are practicing Krishna consciousness and uh, finally when we reach uh, Krishna, we will uh, also do the same thing there. So, uh, necessity of service or devotion uh, is required here also, there also. Uh, that is the emotion that we carry here and there both places. So, that is what one another point was. Uh -huh. Okay. Amarani Mai Prabhu. Krishna told in Bhagavad Gita, which means devotion service is the highest and one who do devotion service and is very intimate to me. So, without 
devotion it is not possible for for anyone to approach krishna so by sitting ideal it is not possible to approach krishna so devotion is a process which is the highest of all are krishna okay thank you prabhu yes thank you prabhu yeah uh, so by like uh, reading various literatures and studying like one can become a gyani and it is told about like he is beyond the senses so it's in nectar of instruction we read that uh, controlling the senses so it's difficult for us to control the senses but it's very easy like to engage the senses in devotional services so we can try to engage our, uh, our senses in devotional services and like we have the nine processes also like it's not like we only have to do some services going in temple and all but like hearing chanting remembering that is that also comes in uh, devotional services okay yes hare krishna maharaj uh, i look at it this way that a mother's love for the child if a mother shows love affection uh doing things for the child caring for the child if we do the same service for krishna only then krishna will accept us by just reading to the child the child also will not get anything so if you just read and don't do any service without using the senses is very very difficult to approach krishna <laughs> all right oh, and uh, yeah um, just one last point uh, guru marash in, in many of your classes you you mentioned this wonderful analogy you know when 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 the husband after a hard days of work he comes back home and he sees that the the wife has not cleaned up the children the whole house is in a mess there's no food cooked etc and when he questions her she immediately says oh i was just thinking about you the whole day um, you know so it's it's just thinking and not engaging in in doing service for the family um, you know the two different things all together so it's better to engage and do devotional service for the lord than instead of just mental speculation okay yeah any anyone else actually uh, a person has to do the service to provide uh, do the loving devotional service to the krishna otherwise the the person's uh, senses will not be purified so unless his uh, senses are purified he cannot uh, directly do the uh, spiritual service so for the purification of the senses service to krishna is a must uh huh so couldn't we argue that studying the scriptures because he's studying the, so that is service to krishna that because he has to do so he has to practice otherwise his senses will not be purified What? It is just like a donkey uh, taking its lot of pain, but not getting the real pleasure. So what? Maharaj, this is only the same. The, that will not be the progression of the law between Krishna and the devotee, just by reading the books. Well, reading the books is also a reciprocation of love with the, with Krishna. Level of Jnana Yoga, Maharaj, is very difficult to obtain Krishna by this way. Well, no, Prabhupada said we can read Srimad Bhagavatam. One day we will see Krishna in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. Maharaj, implementation of whatever we read is the most important thing. If that is implementation is not happening in our own lives, then there is no transformation. And if no transformation, then Krishna seeing is uh, not possible at all. Mm, yeah, transformation. <coughs> Yeah, ma, 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 but the way I see it here is that he 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 seems to be contradicting himself because he said Krishna is beyond the senses, but he's using his senses to study the literature. He, he's studying and analyzing the literature. He's using his senses, but he says Krishna is beyond the senses. So it's a contradiction. Krishna's senses are transcendental, Maharaj. It is not compared with our senses at all. <laughs> Yeah, Krishna is certainly transcendental. But how to understand Krishna? He said it's beyond the senses. 
But if he's God, Krishna is God, he can re reveal himself, even though he is beyond the senses. When, when he's pleased with the efforts of the devotee, the Lord can reveal himself to the devotee. So we have to please the Lord by our own efforts, by our own engagement in service. Maharaj has mentioned that Vedeshu Durlabham, A Durlabham Atma Bhatto. So, uh, just mm -hmm. by, even though he stay in the scriptures, uh, you really need uh, devotion and mercy of uh, the devotees to to realize the Supreme Lord. Okay, he could argue, well, that's the Vedas. I'm using Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> Srimad Bhagavatam is <laughs> directly God, right? Then you, you said Vedeshu Durlabham. No, difficult to know by the Vedas. Okay, I'm not studying the Vedas. I'm studying Srimad Bhagavatam. This is the fruit of the Vedas. There's so many arguments. These things can go on forever. All right. Bhagavatam and Devotee Bhagavatam comes, I guess. Okay, yeah, your point, good. Right. The Devotee Bhagavatam, very nice. Okay, let's take the last question, group number three. Some people say God speaks to them directly. They don't need any guru. Who is this, who's going to speak? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. My group members consist of Rukmini Mohan Prabhu, Yashoda Mataji and Satish Prabhu. And we have come up with these points. Um, just by reading this statement, one can figure out that the person is a mora or a fool. And he is uh, Niyama Agra, that means he is accepting the uh, part of the religious principles. So, uh, like, like we can look at the example of the Ritviks who are accepting only Srila Prabhupada is their guru rather than uh, accepting a guru. So, uh, one of the verses that uh, our group has come up with is uh, chapter 4, text 34, that is, Tat vidhi pranipa tena pari prashnena sevya upadekshyanti te gyanam gyanina sattva darshina. That means like just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master. So in this regard, this, the, the, the people are not trying to surrender to the spiritual master to know the truth. Rather, they are treating themselves as gurus. So they are directly connecting themselves with Krishna. Then uh, inquire from him submissively and render service unto him. They are most people who do not like to render service to the spiritual master. So they try to bypass this stage and uh, try to have some sort of freedom in their lives and directly connect themselves to Krishna. They do not like to follow Vapu and Bani. And uh, the self-realized soul can impart knowledge unto you because they have seen the truth. So. Uh, in, in this regard, that they are totally rejecting the acceptance of the spiritual master. But we must understand that Krishna also had a spiritual master, and even Lord Chaitanya had a spiritual master. Um, so we cannot just uh, ignore this concept of uh, have not having a guru. So uh, in, in this regard, uh, some people say that they speak directly to uh, the God, Sorry, some people say that God speaks to them directly. So probably they are in some hallucinations that they are trying to make some sort of statements that the God is speaking to them directly. That is what our group has come up with. All right. Thank you. Yes. Anybody would like to add anything to this? Uh, Maharaj, I have a question for her. Yes. Uh, for the group. So we just read a few minutes back that um, uh, Krishna will give us the intelligence. He will talk with us. He, he's within you and um, uh, he's not, even though he's far away, he's within you. So he's talking with us. So then why do we need a guru? <laughs> um, I'm That's to to <laughs> yes, I try to answer to that. Uh, to, for Krishna to talk to us within the heart, uh, first of all, Krishna needs to know us, and for Krishna to know us, the, it's the Guru who tells Krishna about us. Not like, Krishna will not know us directly unless we get the mercy of a pure devotee. So that's where the Guru comes in, he's the bridge between us and Krishna. <laughs> 
person has to do equal devotion towards Krishna at the same time towards the spiritual master. Then his progress will be there in the Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, that will be hard. So a person has to surrender at the lotus feet of his Guru Dev. Jasadri Parabhakti Tathadri Tathav Guru. Taitari Upanishad. Tessar Shetayat Tessar Upanishad. Maharaj, I just have to ask one more thing. So if Guru is still uh, Guru is given to us and a person doesn't still make a progress, then Krishna gives instructions from within. So he'll ultimately come back to him. But uh, what is it exactly uh, telling? What does this ex line exactly tell us? So in case we don't follow the Guru, then Krishna will bring. I didn't get this line fully, Maharaj. Oh. Yes, Mataji, are you there? To end? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, Mataji. Hello, Krishna. Sorry, uh, so, what's the last? Shudha Mataji. Oh, no, Subhadra Mataji. Yes, so with regards to this, like um, I have explained using the translation of uh, text, chapter 4, text 34, that the self realized. Uh, soul can impart knowledge. That means the spiritual masters, the gurus, they are self-realized and therefore they can impart the true knowledge unto others. So that is why it's uh, important to have a guru rather than bypassing guru and directly connecting with Krishna. No, my question is if, uh, if you are still not able to make progress, uh, if you are given a guru and you are still not able to progress, then Krishna will give instructions from within. <laughs> This is for advanced devotees. This is not neophytes or those who are coming to just Krishna verses. That Krishna will give the uh, instruction to the advanced devotees. Yeah, to those devote, those persons who are qualified, Krishna can speak to them. But we have to know what is the qualification. And we have to understand it's a very rare, very special qualification. It's not everybody who has that qualification. Hare Krishna. Yes. Okay. Yes. Hare Krishna, can everybody hear okay? Yes, my yes, my yes, my All right. So uh it's an important point, it's certainly important. We should understand that God can speak and certainly Prabhupada makes a point. You know, you, we may be a member of a spir spiritual society. So God somehow in, 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 imparts instruction what we need to do to make advancement. And his speaking, maybe he actually speaks. And at one point Prabhupada also described how Krishna spoke to him. And the devotee tried to avoid it. He tried to, you know, Prabhupada was being interviewed by reporters and, and, the, and the devotee who was with Prabhupada tried to say, oh yeah, what Prabhupada means is something. And, and Prabhupada got angry and said, no, God actually speaks to me. So the Lord can definitely speak to the devotee. And certainly uh, people like Prabhupada you know, he had the, these experiences. The Lord was speaking to him, telling him. And so it's certainly possible. We shouldn't think that it's not possible. It is possible. But as we said, you have to be very qualified. It's not very common. And Prabhupada also had a guru. It's not that you just simply wait for Krishna to speak to you. But with the help of a guru, then you become more qualified to hear Krishna speaking to you. And so the guru helps to bring us closer to God, so that we can actually, so that we can actually take more instruction from God. So being a member of the spiritual society is a help, and having a spiritual master is also a help. But still we may not be able to make advancement. So then Krishna sees that we're sincere 
And so then he, then he will direct. He will give some kind of... He may send somebody, some other person there to guide us, or may simply come from the heart. We may call it inspiration, some direction from the heart to do something for our spiritual advance. Of course, we should be very careful about that. Whatever direction we're getting from the heart, it should be confirmed with the help of sadhu, shastra and guru. You know, if, if God from the heart tells you, if God from the heart tells you, oh, you don't need to follow four regulative principles, you can do anything, then, you know, that's not according to shastra. So we have to consider what kind of instruction, what, what is God speaking to you? It has to be according to sadhu, shastra and guru. So that's why we need gurus for guidance, to confirm what God speaks to us. All right, any other points? Maharaj, any, uh, the, again the same point of devotee Bhagavata and book Bhagavata comes here. So we learn from the devotee Bhagavata. So yeah. that, that's very important for us to practically implement things. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay, we'll go ahead. Oh. <laughs> Another preaching application. There's one common philosophy also held by a lot of religious groups that God can be understood directly from within. No guru or spiritual master is necessary. Okay, we dealt with that. We just dealt with that. That was there in the, the question. We won't spend time with that. Another quote from Prabhupada. God talks with whom? That is said. Tesham satita yuktanam bhajatam pritipurvakam. Those who have already become devotee of God and engaged in his service. He talks with him, not a third class fool. He doesn't talk with him. It is clearly stated, 24 hours engaged in the service of the Lord. God talks with him. How do you understand that God is talking with him? A rascal fool who has no business with God? So first of all, see whether he's 24 hours engaged in God's service with love and faith. Then you can understand, yes, God is talking with him. But when he has no preliminary qualification, if he says, I can talk with God, he's a nonsense. So Prabhupada describing the qualification. And then further quote from the Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila 149. This verse of Bhagavad Gita 1010 clearly states how Govinda Dev instructs his bona fide devotee. The Lord declares that by enlightenment in theistic knowledge, he awards attachment for him, to those who constantly engage in his transcendental loving service. This awakening of divine consciousness enthralls a devotee who thus relishes his eternal transcendental mellow. Such an awakening is awarded only to those convinced by devotional service about the transcendental nature of the personality of Godhead. They know the supreme truth, the all spiritual, all powerful person is one without a second and is fully transcendental senses. He is the fountainhead of all emanations. Such pure devotees, always merged in knowledge of Krishna and absorbed in Krishna consciousness, exchange thoughts and realizations as great scientists exchange their views and discuss the results of their research in scientific academics. Such, such exchanges of thoughts in regard to Krishna give pleasure to the Lord, who therefore favors such devotees with all 
enlightenment. All right? Preach and be blessed, Prabhupada used to say. The more we give Krishna consciousness, the more we get. So Prabhupada's explaining like that. Krishna appreciates, Krishna takes pleasure and he favors the devotee with enlightenment. Okay, one more of the Chatur Sloki, the last verse of Chatur Sloki. 10.11 Tesham evanu kampartam aham agyana jam tamaha nashayam yatma babasto gyana dipena bashvataha. To show them special mercy, I, dwelling in their hearts, destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. Aham agyana, ignorance, jamtam, the darkness born of ignorance, right? Tesham evanu kampartam, anukam, the special mercy. Nashayami atma bhavastu. So, jnana dipena bhashvata, the, the lamp of knowledge, with the shining lamp of knowledge, the jnana dipena. Krishna destroys the darkness born of ignorance with the lamp of knowledge. Oh. So, Prabhupada, purple here a little bit. Would someone like to read? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, sometimes Mayavadi philosophers criticize the devotee because they think that most of the devotees are in the dark, darkness of ignorance and are philosophically naive, sentimentalists. Actually, there is, that is not the fact. There are very, very learned scholars who have put forward the philosophy of devotion. But even if a devotee does not take advantage of their literatures or of his spiritual master, if he is sincere in his devotional service, he is helped by Krishna himself within his heart. So the sincere devotee engaged in Krishna consciousness cannot be without knowledge. The only qualification is that one carry out devotional service in full Krishna consciousness. The Mayavadi philosophers think that without discriminating one, can, one cannot have pure knowledge. For them, this answer is given by the Supreme Lord. Those who are engaged in pure devotional service even though they may be without sufficient education and even without sufficient knowledge of the Vedic principles are still held by the Supreme Lord God as stated in this verse. All right. Can you give any examples like that of devotees? If they didn't have any real academic education. Yeah, we, we, uh, I remember the story of uh, how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in South India, he saw a... Uh, um, person who was reading Bhagavad Gita upside down and when he was asked uh, what are you doing he was like admiring the Lord's uh, um, um, capacity or uh, the Lord's uh, opulences if uh, he can how he's the chariot driver of Arjuna then how great the Lord must be. All right so I, I, I've never heard this section before about the Bhagavad Gita was upside down that's certainly not in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, as I remember it. But what he was doing, he was reading the Bhagavad Gita, but he couldn't pronounce it properly. And, and the, the Brahmanas were laughing at him. He was reading the Bhagavad Gita, and he was reading every day. And the Brahmanas, would, they, they didn't take him very seriously, because when they heard him reading, they could understand he wasn't well educated. But at the same time, he was crying. And so Lord Chaitanya was curious to know why was he shedding tears. And Lord Chaitanya approached him and asked him, what are you doing? And the Brahman, he said, well, my guru, my spiritual master, told me every day I should read the Bhagavad Gita. So Lord Chaitanya was very pleased when he heard this. He thought, very nice, you're following the order of your guru. But then he asked, he said, why are you crying? And then the Brahmana explained, he said, because wh when I think about how Lord Krishna was becoming the chariot driver of Arjuna, 
then it, it brings tears to my eyes. I, I think how merciful Lord Krishna is that he becomes the charioteer of his devotee. So Lord Chaitanya was very impressed when he heard that and he told the man, you are actually the real reader of Bhagavad Gita. But then Chaitanya Charitamrita describes that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also came every day and he taught the Brahmana how to read the Bhagavad Gita. And he actually educated the Brahmana so that he could pronounce the Bhagavad Gita nicely. So it's not that we should just be satisfied, ignorance is bliss. We shouldn't be sentimental. We should cultivate some understanding and we should try to engage in Krishna consciousness with proper knowledge. Any other examples? Uneducated devotees, not much education. Maharaj, I'm not really sure, but how about the gopis? The gopis, all right. The gopis it, were simple yeah. ladies. They were simple ladies, village ladies. They didn't have much education, right? They, of course, they were just. Sorry. In Mahaprabhu's first time, Kula Bija Why? Why do you think he was not educated? Because he was just selling the banana products. Yeah, but that doesn't mean he wasn't educated. We don't know that he wasn't educated. He uh, Sridhar Pandit. But the, the one example is actually um, Gorky Shodas Babaji. Gorkishur Das Babi said, it, it said that he was not educated, he didn't get hardly any education. But he used to go to hear Bhaktivinoda Thakur read, and he was hearing from Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And later on, Gorkishur Das Babaji was appointed by Bhaktivinoda Thakur to Bhaktisiddh, he told Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, you take initiation from him, that he's qualified. Although he was not educated materially, he had actually realized the knowledge. So even one may not be very well educated materially, but Krishna from the heart, he can help the devotee to realize the most confidential or the most complicated philosophical points. They can be cl made clear by the grace of Lord Krishna, because Krishna from the heart directs the devotee. But there's no reason that we should remain uneducated. We should try to educate ourselves and try to learn the Vedic philosophy. All right. From the purport of that, this verse, only by devotional service is the supreme truth Krishna pleased. And by his inconceivable energy, he can reveal himself to the heart of the pure devotee. The pure devotee always has Krishna within his heart. And with the presence of Krishna, who is just like the sun, the darkness of ignorance is at once dissipated. This is a special mercy rendered to the pure devotee by Krishna. Oh. Would someone like to read this one? Yes, Maharaj. If he surrenders only to Krishna, he acquires all the knowledge. So similarly, any person without any knowledge, if he surrenders only to Krishna, he acquires all the knowledge. He has surpassed all stages, and that is also confirmed. If you say how he has done surpass all stages, that answer in Bhagavad Gita you find. Because he's a devotee, just to give, just to show him a special, special favor, simply for showing a special favor, I myself am within, I light up the knowledge. 
And you will be surprised that my Guru Maharaj, spiritual master, who was Guru Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj. He was completely illiterate. He did not know how to sign. And my spiritual master was the most learned man of his age. He accepted that Guru who was completely illiterate. But when he would speak, that Gaurav Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj, he would speak with all my little friends. Thank you. Yes. So Prabhupada's giving this example. Gorky Shuddha's Babaji, even though he wasn't educated, he could speak with Vedic references because he'd heard nicely. Again from the purport, 10.11, the pure devotee does not have to worry about the material necessities of life. He need not be anxious because when he removes the darkness from his heart, everything is provided automatically by the Supreme Lord, who is pleased by the loving devotional service of the devotee. This is the essence of the teaching of Bhagavad Gita. By studying Bhagavad Gita, one can become a soul completely surrendered to the Supreme Lord and engage himself in pure devotional service. As the Lord takes charge, one becomes completely free from all kinds of materialistic endeavors. Sounds nice, right? Free of all materialistic endeavors. We want that. And so many endeavors in material life. But let Krishna take charge. How can we go about achieving direct inspiration from Krishna? Anybody like to contribute offhand without going in partners? Maybe you can just speak out. Maharaj, by chanting our, our rounds attentively in the morning. Oh yes, very good. That's very important, right? A devotee association. Yes, devotee association. By pleasing our Guru Maharaj? Yes, pleasing the spiritual teachers. By reading books? Reading books, yes. Reading the Prabhupada's books. Right? Okay, yes, Prabhupada's book, yes. By listening to Bhagavata, listening Bhagavata in the presence of our devotees. Listening to the bhajans of our devotees, really? Do you get inspiration from Krishna from that? Good. Yes. Okay, very nice. When we know that Krishna has so many inconceivable opulences and uh, somewhere we get, uh, uh, okay, we understand our position and then we get inspiration like that. Right, yes. Understanding Krishna's opulences, we'll think more about Krishna. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Maharaj, by trying our best to preach to others, Krishna gives us inspiration. Yes, try our best to please other, please the devotees, right? We want and to, to give... preach to others, to preach to others. Oh, also. to preach, like, try preach. to preach, to tell people about Krishna. Yes, you become dear to Krishna. By Chan... doing Guru Puja, Maharaj. Hmm? By doing Guru Puja, because Guru is himself is a direct reference of Krishna. So by, by pleasing Guru, we can please Krishna. All right. By the mercy of the spiritual master, you get the mercy of Krishna. Yes. Okay. So going on to the next section, Arjuna's acceptance and request to hear more of Krishna's opulences from text 12 to 18. So we're quoting a little bit from chapter 10, verses 12 and 13 purport. The Prabhupada explains, it is not that because Krishna is Arjuna's intimate friend, Arjuna is flattering him by calling him the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Absolute Truth. You know, oh, of course, that's text 12 and 13, right? You know these verses? Uh, param Brahm, Param Dham, Pavitram, Paramam Bhavam, like this. Krishna is addressing Arjuna, you are the Supreme Brahman, the Supreme Abode, like this. 
And so we may think Arjuna is just flattering Krishna, but Prabhupada said, no, when Arjuna says in these two verses, is confirmed by Vedic truth. Vedic injunctions and affirm that only one who takes the devotional service to the Supreme Lord cannot understand Him, whereas others cannot. Each and every word of this verse spoken by Arjuna is confirmed by Vedic injunction. Arjuna knew the Vedas. Arjuna used to discuss with Krishna. They used to meet together, they would discuss the Shastras together. So this was nothing unusual for them. All right. I'll just read the translation of text 12 and 13. Arjuna said, You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the ultimate abode, the purest, the absolute truth. You are the eternal, transcendental, original person, the unborn, the greatest. All the great sages such as Narada, Asita, Devala, Vyas confirm this truth about you and now you yourself are declaring it to me. So Arjuna is convinced, it's confirmed. Okay, there's a, a little statement here from the purport to verse 14. We understand that scholarship is a waste of time. Ask students to discuss and comment. Scholarship is a waste of time. Any comments? This, the purport of text 14. Uh, where is that point again? Yes, Prabhupada writes in the first sentence there, Arjuna herein confirms that persons of faithless and demonic nature cannot understand Krishna. He is not known even by the demigods. So what to speak of the so-called scholars of this modern age? So Prabhupada is saying the so-called scholars of this modern age, they have no qualification to know Krishna. A waste. Um, so, so, yes. Um, this scholarship is not going to be helping us in the final exam. Yes. Uh, unless the scholarship you've got is used in Krishna's service, then there is no point in getting the scholarship at all. If it's just for name and fame, and you're not using in Krishna's service, then uh, it's of no use. Right. Yes. Just to be a jnani. Gyanis make progress very slowly after many births and deaths. Then they come to know Krishna is everything. So if you make advancement very slowly. We don't have so much time. Okay, we'll go ahead. Text 16, people in general and the impersonalists in particular concern, concern themselves mainly with the all-pervading nature of the Supreme. So Arjuna is asking Krishna how he exists in his all-pervading aspect through his different energies. So that is of course, so this is building up to the presentation of Krishna's different vibhutis. This is text 16. We jumped a little bit. We heard in 14 Arjuna said to Krishna, I totally accept this truth, all that you have told me. So this is also a very important verse actually, the text 14. 
where Arjuna is speaking, Sarvamitadrita manye yamam vadesi keshava. I totally accept this truth. All that you've told me, and neither the demigods nor the demons can understand your personality. So that's 14. And then Arjuna goes on 15. Indeed, you alone know yourself by your own internal potency, O Supreme Person, Lord of Lord, Lord of all beings, God of gods, Lord of the universe. And then we come to 16. So Arjuna's request, please tell me in detail of your divine opulences by which you pervade all these worlds. <laughs> right? So, I think that's a good place to stop today. Are there any questions? Anybody? Okay. So no class tomorrow because it's Nishinga Chaturdasi, but yes. we'll meet you next Saturday and we'll continue with this 10th chapter. So thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Gorbak to Vrinda Ki Jai. Jai.